Greetings. I am Pastor David Hewitt of King of Glory Lutheran Church in Carmel, Indiana, and I welcome you to our latest Boost from the Bible, where we gather together to delve into the depths of God's Holy Word, always finding in Scripture God's wisdom and love in this COVID time. Let us begin. Well, here we are finishing our ninth month of this long COVID season. I was just on the phone the other day to wish the husband, they are a fine couple, a happy birthday. When I asked them how they have been doing, the wife said with a little laugh, we are just so darn sick of all this. And then she added, but so are we all, right? I replied, you're so right, Vicki. You are absolutely right. But as we have seen in the news, it's been very difficult to keep our COVID discipline due to fatigue. Complicating matters is the sense out there that a Christian should avoid precautions to show that they really believe in God and are not afraid. Now, we all know that throughout God's word, God shows us through stories and through statements that as John wrote in his first letter, the opposite of love is fear. But fear takes many different forms. It is not only cowardice. A mass killer is often motivated by fear first. Men and a few women who have committed mass murders, and many of them end up killing themselves at the end as well, are suicidal before they are homicidal. They want to take others down with them. Fear of being seen as a loser, fear of losing a relationship, fear of facing a difficult future can often motivate human beings to act out in some way that is not at all healthy. We Christians are called not to fear, but within a certain very important context. That context is, what does God want me to do at this moment? and the next moment, and the next. What God wants me to do may be interpreted by others as fearful, when at that moment what God wants me to be is to be kind to others by not risking spreading an illness to them. What God wants me to be may be interpreted by others as too cautious, when at that moment God wants me to be patient and wait for a better time to act or talk with that other person. What God wants me to be may be interpreted as too clear in expressing a concern to another person, when at that moment what God wants me to be is transparent so that the discussion that follows will not be plagued by hidden agendas. The most important way not to be fearful, not only in COVID times, but at all times, is not to be afraid to follow the Spirit's dictates, filled as these wonderful divine dictates are with biblical wisdom and love. What I'm trying to say is that biblical courage is not the same as fleshly, sinful, often rash courage. Biblical courage, biblical courage takes different forms. Biblical courage, for one thing, is to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. If God has given you and me a mind to think through things and gather facts and use them to do the right thing and avoid the rash, sometimes show-offy kind of courage, then all to the good. We may find ourselves at this COVID time backing away from certain situations in order to not spread not only this disease, but later other diseases as well. Unfortunately, one thing sometimes Christians say in order to criticize other Christians is to say that someone is not a true Christian if they back away or they went away or fled a certain situation. But many do not know how often we find, if we were to look into Scripture, Righteous people fleeing, fleeing situations in both the Old and the New Testaments. 
Let's go over some of them. Let's start with Jacob. After prevailing over his brother Esau in the pursuit of the coveted blessing from God, Jacob was urged by his mother to flee for his life, which worked. It, it actually became a way that Jacob and his son Judah were able to eventually bring the promises of God to us through their descendant, Jesus. Moses' mother, Jochebed, hid baby Moses from Pharaoh in order to escape, for Moses to escape as execution. And later, through the now grown-up Moses, the law of God was revealed. God provided in the book of Numbers many cities of refuge for accused murderers to flee to and to flee in safety until their case could be heard. David fled King Saul many times and was a fugitive from Saul for 15 years. Jonathan, Saul's son, successfully urged David to hide from Saul. David's prayer to God in Psalm 17 was, hide me under the shadow of your wings. In Proverbs 22, 3, we read this proverb. A prudent one foresees evil and hides himself, but the simpleton passes on and is punished. When we go to the New Testament, for examples, we find examples of fleeing as a way to follow God's will. For instance, the angel warned Joseph, which led Joseph and Mary to take their infant son and flee to Egypt for several years. Jesus, in a sense, flees or avoids being arrested and killed, for it was not his time yet to die. When in John eleven fifty four we read, and I quote, Jesus therefore no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from Bethany near Jerusalem to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness. And he remained there with the disciples. Jesus warned the disciples to flee when their preaching was resisted. He said to them in Matthew 10, 23, but when they persecute you in this city, flee to another city. Church leaders knew when to flee. In Acts 14, verses six to seven, we read, and when the attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews to mistreat them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding, the surrounding country. And there they continued to proclaim the good news. Now, as you can see, God's Spirit counsels us in different ways to handle different situations. When the apostles fled from one place, they continued preaching in another. And sometimes God tells us to fight and not flee. The key is not to let earthly passions inflame us into behavior that does not reflect God's will, that does not reflect the God of love and peace. To sum it up, as our boost from the Bible for today, we read that uh, Paul wrote in Romans 12, 18 this, if it is possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Now, the original word for peace in the Old Testament in Hebrew is shalom. If we were to look in the dictionary for the full meaning of that word shalom, we would see that it means more than just the lack of violence, kind of a surface level peace. Shalom means wholeness, a sense of completeness and soundness, a sense of health, safety, and prosperity. You and I as Christians are called to do all we can for God and not live in fear in his eyes and not necessarily in other people's eyes. Others may misinterpret what we do, but so long as we do things at God's command in service to other people, we will live peaceably with all and we will have fulfilled our calling. Amen. Well, thanks for watching this 
edition of Boost from the Bible. You may also go to our website, kogcarmel.org, and find King Glory's Sunday worship services as well, live at 10 a.m. every Sunday. Archived worship services and boosts can be found at the bottom of that first page on our website. And we look forward to you joining us next Thursday or whenever you watch for another edition of Boosts from the Bible. And may God continue to bless you.